You're listening to Big World Network. Amazing Grace, Episode 3. Written by James Helvig. Read by Megan Hedin. Tammy watches as Dale exits the waiting room, stopping only to say something to Rayland. In the past few hours, the nurses have come by twice and given updates on Brenda's surgery. It's progressing, but the recovery time will be many months. Anna's mother is a research specialist for a pharmaceutical company on assignment in Africa. Unable to contact her directly, Rayland has requested that the company relay the information, but the response isn't encouraging. It could take days, perhaps several of them, to locate her. Anna has no memory of her father, and there are no immediate relatives. They will have to wait to get more information from Brenda when she awakens. Anna sleeps fitfully in Tammy's lap. Raylan crosses the waiting area and takes a seat across from her. Leaning forward and speaking in a soft tone, he tells her, My shift is nearly over. My supervisor is pushing for me to get DHS involved, since you don't have power of attorney. I need to know if that's how you want to handle it. Raylan watches as Tammy looks down at the little girl snoring lightly, head propped on Tammy's thighs. Then Tammy slowly looks up again and meets his gaze. Papers or not, she stays with me, Tammy says. I'll take care of her until they locate her mother, and I'll get permission from her grandmother when she wakes up. It was the last conscious thing she told me, you know. Rayland must recognize the steel resolve apparent in her face and tone. Nodding slightly, he replies, I think he'll go for stalling twenty-four hours so we can get verbal permission. You'll most likely still have to have the paperwork drawn up. Is there anything else I can do for you? Stifling a yawn of her own, Tammy says, Thank you, but we'll be fine. Watts is working on the legal paperwork and putting some feelers out for the mother. He also left me these. She lightly shakes the truck keys back and forth. Shaking his head in bemusement, Raylan starts to stand, but Tammy lightly clasps his arm. I do appreciate everything you've done today, Rayland, she says gently. Smiling broadly, he replies, It's been an honor, ma'am. I'll swing by tomorrow and check in if you don't mind. Sure thing. What was Watts whispering about earlier? Tammy asks, smiling in return. He told me to try not to piss you off. Besides, I really don't think we've got enough manpower on shift to make you do anything, Raylan chuckles. Yeah, could have gotten interesting, Tammy says deadpan, making Raylan blush. Clearing his throat, Raylan turns to leave, saying over his shoulder, Tomorrow, then. Looks good walking away, too. Damn, I need to get laid. Shortly after Raylan's departure, a doctor dressed in surgical scrubs enters the room, scanning the occupants. When his gaze finds Tammy, he approaches. Miss Fuller? Nodding in reply, Tammy notes the man's competent air as he settles into the chair Raylan had recently vacated. I'm Dr. Kars. My nurse tells me you're Mrs. Ray's guardian. The surgery went well, and, barring complications, she'll be able to go home in a day or two. She's in recovery, but I would suggest you and the girl go home and rest until morning. Anna stirs, rolling over and opening her eyes to look up sleepily at Tammy. Brushing hair gently off her face, Anna looks toward the waiting physician and sits up, crawling into Tammy's lap. Can we see my grandma now? Anna asks. Anna, this is the doctor that helped your grandma. He was just telling me she's going to be fine, but right now she's sleeping. We'll come back in the morning to talk to her, okay? Anna looks at the doctor and he smiles kindly at her. She really is going to be okay, Anna, the doctor says. It's going to take a while for her to heal, but I'm sure you're a big helper. Clinging to Tammy, Anna solemnly sticks out her little hand, nodding in acknowledgement. Tammy's heart melts, hearing her say, Thank you for fixing my Nana. Glancing at Tammy and smiling even wider, the doctor shakes Anna's hand and replies, My pleasure. It was very nice to meet you, Anna. Standing, the man gives them instructions and directs them to the nurse's station for room information, bidding them farewell. Gathering the belongings scattered tightly around them, Tammy leads Anna toward the desk. Her stomach growls loudly and Anna looks at her questioningly. You got rumbles, she states. Chuckling, Tammy replies, Guess I do. Are you hungry? Maybe this much, Anna says, holding her thumb and forefinger slightly apart. Tell you what, anything you want. Pick your favorite place, and that's where we'll go. Smiling in response, Anna takes Tammy's hand, answering, 
Can we go to McDonald's? Squeezing the little hand softly and looking down at the tiny person slowly stealing her heart, Tammy replies with enthusiasm, McDonald's it is. After deciding to use the drive through and take their late dinner home, Tammy and Anna trudge up the stairs, sacks rustling, while the smell of hot French fries and greasy burgers fills the hall. Setting the suitcase down to unlock the door, Tammy reads a small post-it note stuck at eye level, written in precise block letters. M.T. Straightened up a bit. Top gave us a sit-rep. There is a casserole in the fridge. Looking forward to seeing you soonest. By the way, your locks suck. Cat and Company. Taking the note in hand, Tammy opens the door and Anna steps through first, stopping a few feet through the threshold. Looking back at Tammy as she closes the door and sets down the suitcase, Anna exclaims, Wow! Do you have cleaning peoples? The apartment is spotless and smells entirely devoid of smoke. There are several vases with cut flowers artfully arranged in all the living areas. Taking the food to the small kitchen table, Tammy clears her tightening throat and answers honestly, No, baby. I think Dale asked some of our friends to do this for me, and for you. In the center of the table is an arrangement of brightly colored flowers with a big bow. The card holder is a cartoon figure, and Anna's name is written in bold print across the oversized paper. I can't believe this. Oh, my God, they've seen my dingy place. How could I ever face them? Crawling onto the chair, Anna sniffs the flowers and fingers the bow. It's obvious she's delighted with them and completely unaware that they're specifically for her. While Tammy is lost in thought, Anna opens the sacks and divides their food. Before Tammy can tell her about the centerpiece, the little girl takes Tammy's hand and bows her head to pray. Dear God, thank you for making my Nana okay, but it would have been better if she didn't have to fall. Also for the policemen and the doctor helpers in the ambulance. Opening one eye, she admonishes Tammy. You're not supposed to keep both eyes open. Tammy closes her eyes with a smirk. And thank you for Mr. Dale and his cleaning peoples, but most especially thank you for Ms. Tammy, helping me to not be so afraid and fixing Nana. Amen. And the McDonald's. Amen. Tammy smiles and gives Anna's hand a squeeze before letting go. They focus on the food and Tammy tells her about the table arrangement and card. After a brief debate, they agree to read it after dinner. Chewing happily and making soft smacking noises throughout dinner, Anna asks between bites, Do you think they'll find my mom soon? I'm sure they will. Do you miss her? Tammy asks curiously. Anna hasn't mentioned her a lot in all that's happened. Yes, Mommy works a lot. We have fun when she's home sometimes. Is Cat a real name? Tammy nods and Anna continues after slurping a big drink. Are you going to leave me if my Mommy has to work? The question turns the mood somber. Tammy leans over the table, looking into Anna's eyes, and replies, I'm sure your mother will come home as quickly as she can, sweetie. But to answer your question, no. I'm going to be with you as long as you want me to, okay? Staring back into Tammy's eyes, Anna leans forward, kissing her on the forehead and hugging her neck. I can't fail her. I won't fail her. Keep it together. Hugging her back and blinking back sudden tears, Tammy is surprised when Anna burps loudly. Pulling apart and looking at each other, Anna giggles. Oops! I think you hugged me too hard. Snickering with the laughing little doll of a girl, Tammy says, At least it wasn't a poot. Gross! Anna squeals, snorting in delight. Taking Anna into her arms and picking her up at arm's length before settling her on her lap, they laugh until they're both breathless and Tammy has to sit back in her chair. Yawning and smiling, Anna puts her head on Tammy's shoulder, snuggling close. You have a pretty laugh, Miss Tammy. Will you read me my note now? I can't remember the last time I really laughed. Let's get you ready for bed and we'll use it for a bedtime story. Sitting up and putting on a pouty face, Anna asks, Do I have to take a bath? Meeting her gaze, Tammy replies, It can wait until morning. Where will I sleep? With me. Do you have jammies? Sort of. Are you going to ask me questions all night? Tammy says with a pouty face of her own. Favoring her with an impish grin, Anna says, Maybe. Okay, then fire away. Standing and carrying Anna into the living room, Tammy continues, But you have to talk and change. Setting her on the couch, Tammy retrieves a suitcase in the card while Anna peels off her clothing. 
Pulling out a Dora the Explorer nightgown and a toothbrush, Tammy helps Anna pull the nightshirt over her head, and soon has Anna crawling back into her lap, toothbrush clenched in her tiny fist. Now my note? Nodding, Tammy hands it to her, pointing out the spelled name on the little gold sticker sealing the back. Anna carefully opens it and pulls out the colored paper. After turning it over, she hands it to Tammy to read. Anna, hi there. My name is Kat, and I'm a friend of M.T.'s. I wanted to wish your grandmother a speedy recovery and to thank you for taking care of M.T. for me. She's a special person. I hope to meet you very soon. Please don't let M.T. smoke. It's a very bad habit. Hoping to be your friend, too. Cat. Tammy considers skipping over parts, but she knows her friend. She'd never let it pass. Who is M.T.? Anna asks, eyebrows knotted together. It's me, sweetie. It used to be a shorter name for me than Major Tammy. Kind of like when someone calls Joseph Joe or Jimmy Jim. Do you know how that is? Officially, maybe. But maniacal Taz, marvelous tatas, or anything else to get a reaction was more like it. Uh-huh. Now it's Ms. Tammy. I think I like Cat. She's funny. Do you have to smoke? Because it burns my eyes. I won't tell Cat if you really have to. The look in Anna's face is one of devotion and utter trust. Tussling her hair, Tammy tells her, I just quit smoking, and I think you'll like Cat, too. Come on, let's get to bed. We can clean up in the morning. Yawning, Anna answers drowsily, K. Carrying her down the hall, they enter Tammy's bedroom and she leaves off the light, pulling back the covers. She lies down next to the child, stroking her hair. In a few moments, the exhausted little girl is asleep, and Tammy whispers, Good night, sweet girl. Intending to get up and clean their mess, Tammy instead wonders at the events of the day. She's tired, but for the first time in recent memory, satisfied and oddly happy. Who am I kidding? I don't know crap about this kid stuff. And so thinking, she drifts off to sleep. Big World Network.